Hi, welcome to Beyond Today in the Rod and Cindy podcast. How's everybody doing today? We have a little bit of a crowd out here watching us. We kind of like this. It's kind of fun. Hi, crowd. Yay. Thank you, beautiful people. Hi, some beautiful women out there that's staring here. I think they're here for Mike, but I'm not sure. Um, could it's be. The it's the wine, the yes. Wine. Yes. Mike brought Cindy wine today for her birthday, so it's kind You're of fun. 40. Big big four oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Again yes. again. Um so <laughs> very happy it's like Groundhog Day. It is Groundhog Day, <laughs> absolutely. My name is Rod Lyman and I'm here at uh, Beyond Today and that with this beautiful group of people. And to the left of me I have this wonderful, wonderful soul. Her name is Cindy Muby, Cinderella, aka I always like to say that just because it's fun, right? You are fun, honey. Thank you. Yes. Just a little bit of a story, quick story, that uh, Cindy and I went uh, putt-putt golfing yesterday, and (laughs) I kicked her butt bad. For his birthday. Happy birthday. Yes. And she she kept telling me that she she let me win. So anyway, then we go-kart raced, and and she could not catch me. No. There's one thing, though, you have to know, that if you're going to go go go-kart racing after 20 years and that, sometimes the seats get smaller. (laughs) I could not put the harness on. Uh, you know, but you did great. I did, and the young man that was trying to get me in my chair and that was not about to help me put the harness on. Because <laughs> the buckle's right. Yeah. Anyway, it's a family show. So, That's right. <laughs> and we're having this wonderful, wonderful time that, uh, and to, to the right of me, and that is Mike, our producer, and he puts us together. He, he records it for us. He studies up on this. He gets excited about stuff here. And that he gets up, up early in the morning. He brings us wine. He he's just that <laughs> all American. Man. He's the man. He's the all American man. Thank Hi, you, Mike. Mike. How you doing? Thank I'm you. Wonderful, How are you? Fantastic. You know, we you're not in the red. No, I'm not. Awesome. I have the red right here in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> We've moved it in the right direction. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. And today is a Sacred Feminine Part 3. I am so excited about this. this is, these are great oh. podcasts. I just love these podcasts. Then, uh, Before we get into the sponsors of, uh, of, of this podcast, then, I think you should introduce this beautiful lady that's to the left of you. Absolutely. We have another beautiful, beautiful lady here with us, uh, Jeanette St. Germain. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She shared her stories with me and her love of what we're going to talk about today and brought the house down within me. I was crying. I've, I've already got my tissues. Just so you all know, I've got a box in front of me as well. So I'm super, super, super excited. And I can't thank you enough for being a part of this, um, th- these uh, podcasts, excuse me, that we're doing about the whole sacred feminine and the energies that are out there and that we all have within us as well and that we need to exude these beautiful energies to bring balance into this world and hopefully some peace and love along with that so go ahead my dear please share your share yourself i'm jeanette saint germain and i am already starting to cry <laughs> thank you cindy <laughs> uh, i am so honored to be here this is a subject that touches my heart at the core as mm-hmm. we discussed already but uh so important to share and to be in this space and to have this opportunity to share with like-minded souls and those of the same tribe is it's just so such a blessing to me so thank you for having thank me. you <laughs> thank you it is a blessing to have you here dear it is because not a whole lot of people know it or feel it or or maybe if they do they're afraid to talk about it and mm-hmm. share it but they feel something or know something inside and you know it's just finding those right you know person or people's out there to be able to sp- express this beautiful information and this beautiful love that we all have within us that comes from a beautiful divine place definitely completely yeah. agree absolutely but we have to pay some bills now so let's get into the sponsorship of everything sorry guys um, our Aww. first sponsor is visions of health which is a wonderful workshop put on by dr emil faith and rod lyman a medical intuitive meets a medical medium this is uh, turning to a revolution, secrets and of, of their highest health. You really get to see who you are. So it's fun because I think you, last time we did it, everybody got to be play part of it and get to come up and, and we talk about what we see. And we talked about the organs, the glands, the hormones, the metabolic imbalances um, that we revealed. Um, we discovered hidden nutrition def- deficiencies, you know, which was kind of fun. We unearthed energetic and emotional blocks 
How beautiful is that? And it's understanding your unique sensitivity of who you are. Now, Dr. Emil actually wrote a book about um, Are You a Sensitive mm-hmm. Person? Man. He's a beautiful man. Have you met Dr. Emil? Yes, I know Emil. He's yeah. amazing. He, he actually is. gave me a copy of his book, and it's wonderful. Oh, absolutely. I yep. recommend Did he it. sign it? Yes. He signed mine, yeah. too. Is that awesome? It's so cool. <laughs> I love it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So that will be Saturday, June 17th at, uh, at the Storm Wisdom. You've been to Storm Wisdom? Oh, I love Storm Wisdom. Charles at Storm Wisdom is awesome, yeah. isn't it? He's yeah. a big He listens bear. to our podcast, too, and I love him. Hello, right? Charles. Hi, Charles. Oh, hi, Charles. <laughs> Thank so you. So that'll be at Storm Wisdom. Make sure you guys look that up. It's also on our website at beyondthenumber2day.com, beyondthenumber2day.com. That's going to be a lot of fun. That uh, If you have any questions about it, you can actually call Beyond Today at 602-374-4926. We also have another sponsor about Beyond Sundays. How beautiful is that? Beyond Sundays is this beautiful metaphysical not morning that we have every morning, which we have tomorrow morning, from 8 to 9.30. We're, we're recording on Saturday, by the way. And donation only. It's a like a love offering that. Uh, it's going to be meditations. It's ceremonial. It's traditional um, com- <laughs> contemporary teachings from all the masters. And it's usually from one of the masters that are here at Beyond Today, but we ask other people to come and teach in, um, on Sundays, and we have a great time. Cindy and I did a couple of them. We did a Mother's Day one, and we did mm-hmm. uh, open heart meditation. Um, this Sunday is going to be Teresa. She's going to be talking about the art of prayer, which that ought to be interesting, mm-hmm. fascinating. Yeah. She's actually a ordained minister, which I find fascinating, too. It is. And last Sunday we had Tina Fritz. She did a beautiful job on a journey out of a meditation it took me down to a path of when i was a i or this little girl you know i could see her and it was a beautiful 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 thing maybe jeanette saint germain might be i was thinking mike yeah. and jeanette i think they them both on should yes. do a sunday <laughs> we need we need a couple days it. off cindy and cindy and i do and so maybe mike and uh, jeanette would be honored to uh, take our place i what do you think you bet. Yeah. Right, we, I love putting people on the spot. That way they have no way of saying no. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? Would you like to fill in a Sunday? I don't think I can say no. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's beautiful. We're trying to keep the momentum going with that as well. Yes, absolutely. So I'm excited about all these things, wonderful things. And, you know, last but not least, we have another uh, sponsor for the show, which is beautiful. And the sponsor is... Jeanette. Jeanette. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a center down in Tempe called Radiant Soul Center, and we have all kinds of classes, workshops, meditations, and anything with daily spirituality, modern mystic travels. And I'm just so excited to expand and grow that community and um, continue my work and share with lovely people like you. Yay. Thank so, you. Yeah. And did you mention your website? And oh, my and website is uh, JeanetteStGermain.com, and my phone number is 480-648-3335. And that's my office number, so you can reach me there or email me through the website. Yes, amazing lady with the beautiful <laughs> talents and things to offer. Thank you. Wow, that's crazy. It's beautiful, <laughs> though. It's, it's crazy beautiful. So well, let's kind of just get right into this because this is uh, something that we all are excited about and we all love and uh, care about. So I- I'm excited about this. Uh, we're we're still working on. We got brand new equipment, so we're still working on some of the equipment stuff. Of that so um, we're getting it, getting everything hashed out. But I think the what's behind it is the words of wisdom and everything that we have. So I'm excited about this. Um, so. I'm going to turn it over to these lovely ladies because they've been talking and they've been talking ear off the way Mike and I are setting up. So <laughs> so let's get right into it. Sounds great to me. You ready, girl? Yeah. Me too. Well, I just want to start out by saying uh, Jeanette and I had a conversation about a week and a half ago on the phone and, you know, kind of conversing of what we're going to talk about today. I mean, even though we had an idea. Um, and before I knew it, she was telling her story and her connections and her channelings and, and everything about what we're going to she's going to share today and it had me in tears and then before you know it she was in tears and it's just it, so it's just meant to be to have this podcast and to again continue this feminine energy sacred feminine energies of 
these podcasts, um, you know, more of these. So, um, Jeanette, if you don't mind, just please, you know, reshare what you shared with me and, and let the audience feel and hear your story and, and you know, what you get and, and let them feel everything about this and mm. probably get your tissues ready. I'm going to say it again for the 40th time. <laughs> Go oh, ahead. Thank you. Um, it's so interesting because the divine feminine energy has been just a part of me my whole life. And I started tuning into it more when I was a child and I was going to these different religions, trying to figure out what was religion, what wasn't religion. And I was always having strange experiences happening to me, um, seeing things, hearing things that other people couldn't. Uh, extreme sensitivity to the feelings of others, to energies that I couldn't put a name to or rational explanation. And so I started going to these different churches. And one of the churches I went to, they had a very different take on Christ. Mm -hmm. And I just remember walking into the church and seeing this beautiful picture of Christ where he was holding a child on his lap and a book. And then there were all these lambs next to him. And there was all this light and beautiful energy. And the other churches I had gone to, uh, as a child, they showed Jesus on the cross or in these other kinds of imagery that was very, you know, shocking to my system. And when I saw this image of him with the child and the sheep, it just filled my heart and I just started crying. Oh. And I was probably about seven or eight years old at that time. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, that's what Christ feels like. That makes sense to me. And so I started learning about that religion and I would still go and figure out different things and through the course of my soul journey, trying to figure out who I was, really, I started tuning into the feminine aspect of it because I recognized in the different organized religions there wasn't a lot of talk about the feminine. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I would always question that. I would question the church leaders, well, why can't a woman be a priest? Or why can't a woman be a bishop? Or why can't a woman be some kind of leader? Because to me it felt so imbalanced. They had this imagery of Christ that was so full of love and hope and teaching and healing, mm -hmm. but it felt like it was missing something. Wow. And um, so that was kind of the intro to that, and I just knew something was missing. As, as a young child, I could feel that wow. in that journey. Um, oh, I'm trying not to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> so long story short, I kind of went away from the spiritual path for a while and focused more on my physical healing and mental healing and emotional balancing. And through the course of my adult life and working with healing with my children, I got back into more of the spiritual aspect of things and feeling energies again and understanding a little bit more of who I was and what I had shut off for a while. And it started coming back. Oh, yay. <laughs> and I couldn't shut it off anymore. <laughs> and, I mean, now it's on a daily basis of different things happening and coming in and shifting and changing. And so much that has been coming in just over the last few years, especially, has been that energy of the divine feminine. Mm. Uh, all these books seem to come find me. Uh, books on the Essenes, books on the lost teachings of Isis and Mary Magdalene, uh, books about Sophia. Mm. And... The interesting thing about Sophia, that the way that the universe creates these synchronicities, I started my business of just energy healing. That was my goal. I just wanted to be a healer and didn't want to do anything with <laughs> intuition or channeling or going into weird dimensions. I didn't even know that existed and I didn't care to. Just wanted to leave, make people feel good. And yeah, spirit has other plans, right? <laughs> so <laughs> uh, one of my teachers was talking to me about the angels. And one of the first energy healings I learned was healing with angels. It was called IET, Integrated Energy Therapy. And then I learned Angel Light, and I learned Reiki, and I learned all these different energy healings. But the angels were the, the big thing. And he said to me, well, why don't you call it something with Sophia? And that name just like shook me. And Aww. I was like, what, Sophia? And he said, oh, it's an angel of wisdom and unconditional love. Right. And most people don't even know who she is. And I said, oh, I have to bring her back. <laughs> that was my thought. So I named my original business Sophia's Touch because of Sophia. 
And then through the evolution of that, I started learning more and more about Sophia and who that is. And this whole energy of the divine feminine that has been lost mm. and recognizing that even at a higher self level, at a soul level, um, my core energy is Sophia and still trying to figure out what all that means. But the fact that I just named my business that and had this urge to bring it back, you know, this divine feminine Love and it. didn't even know what it was. <laughs> it's all right. It's beautiful. So just the way the universe kind of puts you in those places. Mm -hmm. And um, the Sophia energy has subsequently shown me more of why I was so drawn to Christ and this just exquisite heart connection uh, with Mary Magdalene, with Mother Mary, with Anna, the grandmother of Jesus, and mother of Jesus, and all these different teachings that have kind of been lost but are suddenly coming back. There's a whole lot of books out there now about the Essenes, about Jesus and the lost years of Jesus and the Magdalene and Sophia even. I'm finding all these things about Sophia and uh, it is just fascinating. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ah. So... <laughs> So, um, wow, I'm just lost in the moment here, sorry. <laughs> so your Sophia, this energy, so what do you, what do, you do with her now then? Um, like, do you expand with her, or can you share a little bit more about that? And then I want to get into Mary and Jesus a little bit yeah, too. Yeah. So go ahead. Um, so Sophia, the way that I understand Sophia is that it is the energy of source that created source source of source of source. So um, Jesus, at least in my understanding, was the energy that was created through the third energy that was created through Sophia. So there's Sophia. Sophia created a masculine energy to create with, and then those two energies in union merged, created the Christ energy, the Christ energy of unconditional love, mm. which is the essence of the divine that is expressed when people are in union in the energy of source. And then the Christ energy is able to flow through all forms of individual consciousness. Mm. And that's why we talk about um, people being Christed or having a Christ energy. It's just this unconditional love energy that is an expression of divine love wow. in its most simple form. <laughs> there you go. So it, it goes from there. But Sophia created all. They created all. And it's just this, um, I channeled this whole message that's going to go in my book about Sophia and the creation of this universe and how it, it all came together through this energy. And the visions I had were showing the creation through the womb of this goddess energy that was also the god, that was also the creator of the god and the goddess. And this whole Christ energy is part of it. And um, these words don't do it justice, obviously. Uh, but... I'm connected very strongly with that energy and the source energy that comes through the vibration of Sophia. So when I do my work, either energy healing or intuitive readings or the meditation groups, I take people into source. And a lot of times we go into Sophia and we go into the womb or the heart or the breath or the light or whatever it is. Mm. And we go into this most exquisite, ecstatic, blissful place mm. that there are no words. You, you completely just go into the oneness. And so Sophia offers that uh, as, an, as an energy, as an avenue of enlightenment and awakening. And, okay, she's telling me. Um, also a remembrance. So a huge key with Sophia is remembering your own divine spark. That's it, yes. <laughs> so that's Sophia. And there's a whole story there. She's pointing at me, but... <laughs> Is she okay with you sharing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, she wants me to say more. I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> well, if if you if she wants you to and you want to, go ahead. Please do. Yeah, talk as much as you want, Derek. Absolutely. Um, she's showing how so her key, the energy to her, the key to her energy coming into the planet at this time, is not only about the divine feminine reawakening to, within society, within our cultures, on a global scale but also at the individual level of us remembering who we are, mm. right? As divine <laughs> beings of light, <sighs> right? And I'm gonna cry. She um, showed me this story, and you can Google this and look it up a little bit, but she showed me this story, and then I started researching it. But there, the idea in some of the Gnostic traditions, they talk about Sophia and Logos, 
And Logos is the beloved of Sophia that she created through her own energy, breathed into life, and then he breathed back into her, and then it created this Christ energy. But Sophia and Logos were up in the ethers, doing their thing, being creators. And through Sophia's energy, all of these individual sparks of consciousness started going out into the, the world of matter. And Sophia is a very curious energy, <laughs> a curious creator energy. And she wanted to experience with the individual sparks of consciousness. And so she started going with them that spark within them while still also staying here. And then there's this whole story about what happened with Earth and how Earth um, kind of fell into this darker place. And we don't need to go into the whole story of that. There's a lot. But basically, Sophia saw this energy coming over the planet that was meant to be a place of paradise, Mm. a, a Garden of Eden type of thing, but in physical form. So the cool thing about Earth was that it was matter. It was form, not just energy. And in all these other places, everything was still energetic. Like, they didn't have the physical bodies like we do here. Right. And so the idea was to come to Earth and express love and connection and feeling with these other physical beings. Oh. That was the experience. Yay, love in the physical. Right. And it got twisted from some different energies. And there was a veil of forgetting that was created and... I won't go into all of that, but Sophia saw this and her heart is so full of love and longing for this beautiful connection of love. And she was feeling that it was being disconnected somehow. And she decided to fragment herself to all of the lights on the planet so that they could find their way home at some point. And the story goes that she ended up losing herself in the process. So then (laughs) she's pretty much stuck in this place with all of her so-called children and um, everybody just trying to figure out how to find their way back home. This yearning of, you know, rejoining and being in union with each other and with their, their oneness. And so then Logos, the masculine energy, sent the Christ energy that was created from the two of them because he couldn't leave the heavens as well. Otherwise, it'd be complete chaos, right? (laughs) As the story goes. And so he sent the Christ energy to be ignited so that people could find their way back to Sophia, so that he could find his way back to Sophia, which was his beloved. So there's there's a whole bunch around that. But that's the mythology that I was kind of shown, and I I saw this whole story of like cosmos and galaxies and all these things. (laughs) And then I read this story, and I was like, oh my gosh. (laughs) So, um, but again, that yearning for who we are, why we're here, and how do we get back into that place of connection? Yep. This feeling of separation that we have that is always an illusion because we have our divine spark within us, Uh but we forget. And so Sophia's all about wake up. Find it, remember. And I brought you this Christ energy to help you find your way through the veil, through the darkness, through the land of, of death, essentially. Right? So, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, t- I'm glad I didn't have to talk there for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm just all in tears. It was beautiful. My gosh, my gosh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. <laughs> wow. I, <laughs> Seriously? I know. Do you have something to say, Rob? Oh, I just thought it was a beautiful story in that. Uh, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> it's a great story. No. Um, so I, I do have a question for you then. So um, how, how do you justify Sophia? I mean, who is Sophia to you? All. She's everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, so God, was, God is creation, source, everything. So she's everything to you. Mm-hmm. She's the old she's being. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So and she talks to you yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. You can see her and everything uh-huh. else. That. So, what is that in essence to your your essence and within you? That? It is my essence. Ah. Yeah. So how do you get to that point in your life where you can actually? bring your essence out to be able to see it and hear it and feel it. You give in to the love. You You, surrender to it. I think that a lot of people get lost or confused because they are afraid to let go of their individuality because when you have this kind of energy inside of you, 
you have to give over to it completely and let go of the ego, the I, the me, and learn what it feels like to go into we, one, all. And that, that's the simplistic way of saying it. So you just, you gave up to love. You gave up to every hardship, every physical being that you are. You gave into that. Yeah. Because now you know who you are. Yeah. And, and when there is a hardship, I just <coughs> find the love in it. I find the core of love, and I find that it's always taking me back to love. Like, the further I get from love, the closer I am to love. I, I, I feel that. I, I see the cycle. I, I just know it. And that's absolutely right. I mean, that's yeah. that's the thing is that the, when you get closer to love, it's like you're closer to God, which is your God. Yeah. So this essence that you have, what is it to me? I think it's whatever way love expresses itself, whatever way the divine expresses itself through you. So us being one, it's how I express myself. It's because it's an experience. I can't, I can't tell you how things look to you because it's perception-wise. Mm -hmm. So it's my perception of what kind of love is what. That's so beautiful, yeah. honey. So my essence is my essence and yours is yours. Yeah. But yet they're the same. They're the same. <laughs> she, she showed me, because I was trying to figure this out in my head, same as what you're asking, and she showed me that all of us are, we have our unique divine genome. It's like a fingerprint. Mm -hmm. Everybody is unique in their divine spark, but we all have the divine, divine spark. And within that divine spark, every single person has every aspect of the divine contained within them, within their unique blueprint, their right. thumbprint. So you have all the aspects of Sophia, of the divine Absolutely. creation energy, and I have all the aspects of divine creation energy, but how we express it and how we put it out into the world and then how we subsequently perceive it is our unique spin. Exactly. <laughs> That's how beautiful that is yeah. then. So we, what, what dimension, if we had to talk dimensions, what dimension would this be? Whew. Uh, the way that I understand dimensions is that, whew, getting heavy here, okay. Sorry. There's, that's okay, just a lot of energy. Um, there's 13, and the 13th would be source frequency. Okay. And within each dimension, like 1 through 13 or 1 through 12, uh, there's 144 other dimensions within each of those dimensions. And then it goes out from there. It's in parallel dimensions and other dimensions, blah, blah, blah. So Sophia, to me, would be the 13th, but she would also be the umbrella energy beyond this universe. Absolutely. So um, when I go into these frequencies, like my highest self at an individual level that I can tap into would be 12th dimensional within like the 33rd dimension within the 12th is what they've shown me. And then when I go into a Sophia, it's 13th and beyond. I skyrocket completely out of this universe and I see other universes and how they're made. And some universes are complete love, nothing but love. There's no duality. There's no white and dark, yin and yang. It's just love everywhere. Yeah. And then other universes are just dark. There's nothing else there, just dark. This matter that is waiting to be created, like nothing has been created there yet, right? So there's all these different things or energies that I'm shown through this this frequency of Sophia. Mm. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So, it's fascinating. It's well, it is. Fascinating <laughs> so so here we are, we're at the step, steps of, of, of the threshold of everything, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're a physical body, and this is the only further you can get with the physical body is because it's like an anchor to you, right? But if you step into your essence of who you are and that, you can just go beyond the beyond. Yeah. So, Tesla was right. Nikolai Tesla was right, yeah. right when he says to take your matter and mass, remove your matter and mass, and you will seek enlightenment. You become and infinite. You become infinite, exactly. And that's the whole, the whole concept of who we should be is we leave our matter and mass behind. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of people that get anxious or they start shaking inside and everything else. And, that. and the part of that shaking is we don't want to leave the physical body behind. And we hold on to that. So that anxiousness and that... And that it is there, but it's because we're holding on to so much of the physical matter, and we need to let it go. So can you kind of help with that? <laughs> can you kind of share your insight about how to get rid of that? 
how to get rid of the fear and the shaking or how to get rid of the body. <laughs> Maybe all the All of the above. <laughs> if you could answer all those, that would be fine. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Um, the fear, the shaking, mm-hmm. uh, I perceive that as the individual consciousness being afraid of letting go of itself. And so I shift into love. But I also honor the fear because part of that is the experience of having a human experience. Right. Like we're here to have that experience, to be divine beings in a human form. Well, what's that like? Let's see. Let's explore. Let's experiment. Right. It's kind of the whole point. And can we go back into the essence of divinity while we are still holding a physical body? That's the, the big question, because it hasn't been done before, at least not in, on a planetary scale, um, where we become able to hold this energy, this essence within a form. Do you see what I mean? Oh, absolutely, yes, absolutely. Um, So how do we get rid of it? I think we learn to work with it. Oh, fascinating. Instead of trying to separate, we learn how to be in unity with all that is, and that includes our physical experience. Well, that was beautiful. (laughs) That was well put, honey. Thank you. (laughs) My core belief is that um, we chose this body. We built it from scratch. Mm-hmm. We told our mom and dad how we, what we wanted. And we built this body. Yeah. And then we, our essence did, in other mm-hmm. words. And then we, we say, okay, we're going to move in. We built this body for what we wanted to experience. Mm-hmm. This is what I want to experience, so I'm going to build my body this way. And, that, and, you know, sometimes I look in the mirror and go, why? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do the same. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a beautiful thing, you know. It's yeah. like, you know, I built it for, for experience only. And, and, and I did. So we have to understand that, that there is this correlation. Yeah. It is also our shield. It is a protector of our essence. And that is mm-hmm. the first defense, basically, before anything. So this body takes a lot of, of pounding. And that's why we create it the way we create it. Yeah. That there's a lot of people believe that our we our souls as it grows and we grow within that our body wants to grow with it and that's what I want to believe why I gained all this weight. Is I keep telling myself that too. That's, 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 that's my story and I'm sticking to it because I know my essence doesn't fit inside my body sometimes and I know that mm-hmm. and so the body wants yeah. to expand with that and I feel that and I, and I know that yeah. so it's like I just have to be who I am. Yeah. And, and that's and that's that's so true. That and loving listening to your story and then Sydney's knowing Sydney's story and everything else about the essence. And I got a really quick tell a really quick story. Is I, I came back from South Dakota and that I was in South Dakota to help my parents, and that and my mom had cancer and everything. And so I was gone for three months. And I came back, and I met Cindy. You know, again we've been friends. Cindy and I've been friends for a long time, but I just we started hanging out more when I came back. We're sitting and watching a movie in one day, and she says, let's play with energy. I said, yeah, I love to play with energy. Let's do this. <laughs> and so we were looking at each other and everything else, and as soon as I turned and looked at her, her essence stepped out of her mm. body, reached inside of mine, and yanked my essence out. <laughs> love it. <laughs> she loves it. Yes. He oh, did, I did. <laughs> Okay, we have to hear why she did just a moment. Keep going, keep going. (laughs) So I'm standing there going, what just happened to me? What is this? Oh, my gosh. And, and of course, Sydney's essence is is just she's so strong and everything else that she just had a bear hug onto my essence and she's loving on it and everything else. And and I'm going crying over there. What's happening? I know. He's like picking up his stuff and he's like, I think i got to go now. I'm like, wow, so soon? Sydney's like, we, we haven't fun over exactly, here. Exactly, exactly <laughs> yeah. what she was saying. She goes, hey, we just began. I said, I know, I just got to go. And I didn't, for, it was like two or three days before I told her what happened. It was mm-hmm. like, I had to figure out what what happened. And the idea was, is I've never had my essence just pulled out mm-hmm. of me to, for me to see it. But I always known that we knew each other before we knew each other. And I knew that our essence knew each other by their energy of that. And we have so many synchronicities, you know, it's just unbelievable. So I knew that there was a commonality that we have. So I had to figure this out, though, because I've never experienced anything <laughs> like that. I mean, I was a whimpering dog. I went home with the, my tail behind the legs going. <laughs> and that, and it's like she calls me. She says, everything okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Yes, I'm okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> she didn't know. She was just, she like, thought she did something wrong. It's like, no, you didn't do anything wrong. Now but, I have a question about that. Oh, absolutely. When she did that and you perceived it as leaving you, mm-hmm. did it come back? Did oh, it absolutely. Stay? It was never. And then how did it feel? How did it feel? Oh, my gosh. So it actually what it felt like, as I told her, it felt like my chest expanded and like Velcro almost like getting ripped ripped out of my chest and that because it was like it's like sticky stuff that being pulled away and that and I was like what is this and that, but that was part of me expanding and, mm-hmm. and and I was expanding and it wasn't nothing physical was going on it's just how I felt as it was leaving and then when it came back or you experienced yourself again how did you feel um, it was really funny it's because I took a deep breath and went <gasps> it was like when you be crying and you mm-hmm. that last part of the crying where <gasps> you're always yeah. doing that that's what it felt like is because it was just like it was coming back, but it felt really good, and it felt like I'm home. It felt there was an essence there in that. It was just a really good feeling. It's like I know who my essence is. I can see my essence. I Like you, I can talk to it and see it and everything else. That Cindy didn't even know what was happening. And, you know, she was she's still in the physical part of her body and that, and she's now she can feel it and see it and know yeah. it, but but it's been crazy ever since then. That but it did. It was a really warm feeling that when it came through. What did it feel like to you, Cindy? Uh, that whole moment. Yes. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. I just thought everything was okay, and then suddenly you were just leaving. <laughs> Her higher self was like, oh, I know you. We're going to play. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and I just didn't know. I mm. honest, honestly, I had no idea. My Because I must have been more in my physical, like you said, even though I was in a spiritual moment. Yeah. There's other things that we were experiencing. I could definitely feel that spiritual moment, energies and blah, blah, blah. But that, I didn't know. Because he had sent, he told me to go sit at the table across the way. Yeah. So I did. I sent myself over there. And then when I did that, that's when all this other <laughs> stuff happened. So I think mean, that's why I didn't really know because I wasn't really there. <laughs> I don't know. It's but. so interesting when you are able to combine energies with one that is in resonance with you. When you combine the energies, similar to what we're talking about with Sophia, and even the masculine and feminine energies within us that have to come into balance, when we can do that with another person, it becomes exponential. It's, it's like sun within a sun within a sun, right? It's this energy that just continues to expand. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is it makes you more of who you are and you more of who you are. And then when you're together, you create that third energy that is the expansion of the Christ energy within you and the Christ energy within him. And then it's around both of you. And then it goes <laughs> to everyone and everywhere. <laughs> and it does. It feels like uh, like a part of you is being ripped out and a part of you almost has to die. Like I've had this experience many times. Yep. And um, but then what comes back, it's like it's home, it's connection, it's Oh, there I am. Wow. Exactly. You see? Yeah. And it's like the other person didn't do it to you, but they reflected your truth back to you mm. in, a, in a kind of mirror energy that is so profound. And there, there's nothing else like it. It's one of the, the biggest, most powerful ways of finding yourself within the all and then experiencing the all within yourself. It's so neat. Wow. She actually called me a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Oh. Well, how, how much fun is that? In a fun, know? loving way. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> she goes, "Are you crazy?" I tell is people you? I'm crazy, but they're crazy with me. So oh, it's absolutely, it's, it's, it's the whole thing. So we're not a crazy alone here. Exactly. Absolutely. Crazy together. Absolutely. That's right. How beautiful is that, though? I mean, it's to oh. be able to experience stuff yeah. like that and everything. Um, right after that, Cindy and I decided to do a project called the I Am Project mm. because we wanted to everybody to fill that home yeah. and to bring their essence out and everything else. And it was such a beautiful traveling that we bought these scar- colored scarves and everything. It was their traveling scarves, and oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. It was mm. it was it was majestic. How's yeah. that at to say the least? And that's what her essence, expi- you know, kind of made me experience that too for us to design something that around that yeah. to allow let all our friends and and, and that to experience that also man mm-hmm. and we that's our part of our open heart yeah. that we do in that is that's part of our essence 
Now, the funny thing was is that Blue Star Celestial Energy that, that I teach, that takes you home. Mm-hmm. It takes you into the, the dimensionals. It gets you away from your body. And, that, and so that's what I thought was so beautiful is that when Cindy did that, that's the first thing I thought, this is celestial. And, but there's a whole story of how I even got back from South Dakota with an essence. Mm. And the part of the essence brought me here was the one that pulled me out of my chest. Mm. Or I, I'd still probably be in South Dakota. Mm. Well, my body probably would be still in South Dakota. Yeah. You know, um, I, I had a heart attack, you know, mm. after I got back here and everything else. If I would have had a heart attack in South Dakota, I probably wouldn't have made it. Yeah. So it's quite interesting that essence brought me back here to live. Thank you, Cindy. Oh, certainly. You're more, most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't done with this, this journey yet. I guess you weren't done with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> no, we weren't done with our journey, in neither of our journey. So. No, we had to connect because we have things that we need to be doing, I suppose. Oh, like the podcast here. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. This is so beautiful in that... Uh, we have a lot of beautiful things that's in commonality that we have go through and everything else that, but is there a deity in your life that you are more common with than any other ones? I wouldn't say there's one in particular because I, I go through so many different energies. I'm a frequency holder, so I can pretty much jump into whatever frequency or energy or dimensional I need to in that moment. And I, I have a whole team of energy that I work with more mm-hmm. um, commonly, but I wouldn't say there's one other than Sophia, just because right. I figure go to source. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Well, when in doubt. <laughs> exactly. Well, isn't that yeah. fascinating? Because when we were at the Tibetan monks um, deal this last weekend, was it last weekend? Or? So, uh, Something is mm-hmm. way back there. A couple recently. Of weeks. Yes. Recently. <laughs> there you go. Um, the Lama mm-hmm. up there says, all deities, all goddesses, all gods exactly. are one. Yes. That's how I feel. And I feel the same way. Yeah. That it's, that's my whole feeling. It's coexistence of everything. Everything is one. Yeah. And it's like we don't have to just pick each one. That, and actually, though, um, what was the – it was Tara. Tara, mm. the green Tara is yeah. what, the, what we went for. And, that, mm-hmm. and we found that fascinating is that they kept pointing to Mary Magdalene yes. on the wall. Yes. And the green Tara. And yeah. I found that very fascinating as, as they were pointing up there going – all deities, all goddesses are the same. Yeah. When, when I tune into Green Tara energy, mm-hmm. she feels like Mother Mary energy, except Green Tara is the Mother Mary energy of the planet, right. of the earth, Absolutely. which is similar to Kuan Yin energy. Wow. And then when I connect to the divine form or the more etheric form of Mary, I feel angels and I feel goddess and I feel nurturing mother energy. So you have a, a celestial being of mother and then you have an earthly being of mother mm-hmm. and then you have these other ones in between and it's it's all the same energy. It's just which channel are you tuning into in any one moment in time? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, how beautiful so is that? I totally feel that. Right, yeah. right, right. And when you say Mary, you're talking Mother Mary, right? Mm-hmm. And where does yeah. the Magdalene come in in that So I see... Yeah, I see it as a triad of energy, similar to how there's a triad of masculine energy. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you'll see, well, in regular Christian religions, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There's Mm -hmm. a triad of masculine energy. Um, With the feminine energy, I see Sophia, and then I see Mary, and then I see Magdalene. Mm. So it's a triad, and they all come together. And that even breaks down into other little triads, too. So you have the Magdalene energy, if you take that frequency... Uh, essence. There's the Magdalene of the experience and the twin flame and the beloved and the priestess and all these energies she held on the planet during her time with walking with Christ in that that lifetime. I know, right? (laughs) So that's Magdalene. And then you have another part of her that a lot of ascended master energies come in to another frequency and that would be Lady Nada. So that's Magdalene, Nada. And then a third energy of her um, sometimes the name switches on me, and it feels angelic at times. Um, it's similar to Aurelia. It's not quite the right name, but it's a, a frequency that I have a hard time saying. Um, and then part of that, there's another connection with uh, St. Teresa of Babylon. Is that right? I'm not Catholic. I think that's right. St. <laughs> no, no. Teresa. Um, and then there's 
there's another, like, it just keeps going. There's an Isis energy, there's um, Hathor, there's all Lovely. these different goddesses, there's Aphrodite and Venus, and all these energies when you go into the star and the cosmic level of Mary. Right. Right? So it just depends. Where are you going? Are you going into the stars? Are you going into the, the divine celestial? Are you going into cosmic celestial? Are you going into earthly? Like, what, what level wow. are you going into? Because she's everywhere. And Mary's called uh, the queen of angels because that is the energy. So yeah, the Makes Magdalene's part of all of that. Me. Oh, that's beautiful. That's just beautiful. <laughs> and I see Mary as more kind of akin to the Sophia mother energy, and I see Magdalene akin to the beloved Sophia energy, to the masculine. Wow. Hmm. So there's a little bit of an, an energy shift there. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? I, I, I used to draw a diagram. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, no, no, I, I, I see that. That's I'm very visual. quite a visual. Yes, absolutely. So um, that's kind of like points in, in where you want mapping out in, yeah. your, in, your, in your grid, yeah. basically. This yeah. grid, this is where I want to go for my information now and that. Mm -hmm. And so each one of these people's names are actually a grid <laughs> and at a point on the grid, which is basically for people that take Reiki and that they get attuned to all these different symbols yeah. and that. It's what opens up within their DNA and sends them to that grid. Yeah. How beautiful yeah. is that? It tunes you to a specific frequency exactly. and magnetized to it. And oh, magnetized it to it, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, because you're drawn to it. And it's really interesting is that um, I get to the point, too, where I, I call people darling, honey, and everything else because it becomes a frequency that I can't say a name. I can't speak a name because there is a frequency about it. And the, it's a, like the higher the frequency, you can't hear it. It's the mm -hmm. same thing with the higher the frequency, you can't speak it. And so if you're on that, that frequency and that, that's why a lot of people are honey, dear, and mm -hmm. darling. Right, right, honey, Mike? <laughs> I do the you same call thing. Me sugar cakes. Sugar cakes, Mike, yes. Honey bunny. <laughs> honey bunny. <laughs> That's my new one, honey bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> So what a beautiful thing that uh, you have going on here. I mean, that's so beautiful. Do you actually get to see the grid around the Earth? Yeah. Yeah, I see all kinds of grids. Isn't that depending fascinating? Depending on which way I tune. <laughs> so so with with being able to see the grid, then mm -hmm. you could travel within the grid. Mm -hmm. So um, so like the Book of Enoch and that mm -hmm. with the grid of the dove and everything else are, are also actually where mm -hmm. the pyramids of Egyptian and that with, with yeah. all the grids and that that are all lined up and mm -hmm. everything else. You believe that those are energy sources that we can tap into? Yes, if you're tuning into specific frequencies. So yes. Sometimes I don't even go into those grids because I want a very different frequency. They're right. bringing in a certain energy that is needed for the planet's ascension, but it's only one or two or 20 certain frequencies. So huh. I tend to go above them. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. It's, it, it connects all the latitude, longitude absolutely. lines, all the, yeah. So when we practice, because we're all frequencies and mm -hmm. we're all waves, and that so when we practice the frequency and waves, whatever we're we're attracted to, we will be drawn. We'll yes. be drawn to it. Yes. That just because we can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. The whole concept of it, when we're ready, it will show. Yeah. Its place. You know, they always talk about being uh, a teacher when it's ready. It will will reveal itself. That well, this is the frequency also. If you play play and practice with these different frequencies, and that how beautiful. Uh, Mary Magdalene, all those, all that frequency is on the same. You think is what Sophia's energy? There's a lineage. Okay. The way that they show it to me, so it's not really a tree, but sometimes they show me as a tree because, <laughs> like a tree of life formation, mm -hmm. because my brain makes sense of it linear. Right. <laughs> but how they, how Sophia has shown it is, it's really a spiral, going like this, and so each point of light on that spiral is connecting to all the other points of light, depending on how close they are into the center point it's and then how much they've expanded out from the center point, but they're still on, on the same pathway. Oh. Gotcha. Does That's, that make sense? No, that makes total sense. So, yes. <laughs> the simple answer. Well, no. Because, well, because I always see the universe as, as the orbiting of everything. Yes. Everything's in a circular position yeah. and everything, and everything, each planet has their own little stop and frequencies and everything. That's us ourselves. We have our own universe within us, and that we do have the same frequency, like you said, in a spiral. And each stop is a different frequency of a person, too. How beautiful is that? Like my earrings I have on too. Yes. Two, two, on. Different, yes, two different <laughs> earrings. Well, and as our, as our planet travels through the universe, you know, we're moving into a place where we're getting into light wave frequencies and energies and higher vibrations than we've 
had for the last, what, 15,000 years? And so we're in this place now where the divine feminine is able to take root and put in deep roots and start rising up again because that feminine and feminine energy is all about flow and connection. So you have to be in higher frequencies to go into flow and connection, which leads to unity consciousness and oneness and the all. That's that feminine energy. Mm. The masculine energy puts puts forth the energy, like creates in the world of form. The feminine energy inspires the masculine into action. Oh, so wow. it's been out of balance for so long. That's why your story, like she came in to ignite your fire. Oh, she did. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and she just sits back and lets it happen. And you're like, yeah. yeah then I had yeah, a heart yeah. attack. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. No, no. But that's the beauty it of the divine feminine. Exactly. Like we've been missing that component. So even us as females, we have been trained to be more in a masculine energy. Do do do. Go go go. Push push push. Action action action. Right? right. And that's not our natural energy. So you know, circling back to why we're here today is to bring forth this energy of flow. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm I'm sorry that hour is up. Is <laughs> no, that hor- it's not? Oh, it has to be. So, <laughs> no, it's not. So we have uh, people out there. Is there any questions you have for Jeanette out there? Any, any questions you want to ask? Uh, just no, no, no. You have a question? Absorbing. absorbing. I like that. Like absorbing yes. junior. Good. And Cindy out there, she connects a lot with uh, Guadalupe. Mm, which yeah. I know she's in that. Yeah. That realm as well. Yeah. Mike, do you have any questions? I'm just going to sit here in my corner. Baby doesn't sit in the corners. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, it was, it's an inside joke about the baby in the corner. Yes. So, I know we're wrapping it up here, but there was one question I, I do have real quick, though. Um, speaking of masculine, feminine, or really what I want to say is uh, Christ and Mary Magdalene, do you feel that they have the same kind of type of uh, vibrational energies on the same level, if you will? Yes. Or yes. Yes, they're okay. the exact match of each other okay. at their core essence. Okay. And they cannot function without the other. They can, but it's it's exponential when they come together. So when when they quote unquote took. Uh, Mary Magdalene away or put her down or, or always my famous word is squashed her um, do you feel that that could have been the start or a starting point of this unbalance yes yes yeah okay. it was already happening but um, for their energy to be so powerful and to have that pushing down on that energy um, it had such it had a ripple effect for yes. thousands of years yeah I agree do you um, have any idea oh my God. <laughs> just any like maybe thoughts or or uh, channeling of let's just say if that did not happen to her where we'd be today do you have any idea of what that would might look like we weren't ready okay. to hold the frequencies that they were bringing forth wow. they had to carve that pathway so I think that we had to fall from grace as far as we did. We had to lose ourselves in order to find our way back. And I, whenever I have a hard time in my life, I, I always remember that for every low, there's an equal and opposite high. So in order for us to experience this complete oneness and unification with all that we are, we had to completely lose all that we are. That's my belief. And to be where we are today, to find it, regain it. Yeah. We have the opportunity if we choose it. And it's it's so important that we do. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully there's enough enough of us that we can shift back into that energy because it is, it's everything that we've all been asking for and working for. And it's what we hold inside of us. So how can we be anything but authentic to what is here? You know? Exactly. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Well, yeah, I'm like five times in tears now about this thing. <laughs> wow. okay. So, so it's very, it's very emotional. It's very loving for a lot of people out there, and yeah. that to to hear and feel this and know that that they're not alone. 
that there's a lot of people working together. What we do out there, and it's not just the females, it's the males too. Yeah, in, yeah. In the you aspect. have to have both. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that are out there working to regain what was lost. And, and I think that's the big important part is to open people up to understand what was lost. Yeah. And when people start doing that, they're going to be awakened in, in many different ways. I am very honored to have you here, and I think you're just a beautiful soul, honey. Yeah. And it's everything you said today, and that it was, it was awesome. It was just, I, I love listening to what you said. Well, thank you. Absolutely. And I want to thank you for holding such a beautiful masculine energy. Oh. You're holding that, that safe place for the woman to feel safe again, to express her fullness and her power without being afraid. Oh, absolutely. That is, that is what we have to have. Yeah. So yep. thank you. And instead of having somebody reach inside me and rip my essence out <laughs> because she's a strong feminine. You could handle it. I called, her, right. I called her Zena after that. <laughs> the warrior princess Zena. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. She just wanted to have fun. Oh, of course she did. Yeah, yeah she did. She did. It was all, exactly. Miles and miles away. I know. It was all in fun. I like that. It was all in fun. <laughs> in love. That's what it really was. Let's just build so. some sandcastles, baby. Absolutely. Yeah. There you go. Jeanette, we would love to have you back. Oh, please. Um, please, Thank you. please come back and everything honored. else. And that, uh, we're actually going to be letting Mike have a mic here. One of these, we're going to bring him on as a guest, too. We've had Mike on as a guest before in that, and he's, he's been pretty profound and beautiful in that. So um, I'd love you to, to check him out, too, when he comes on and listen there to some of his stories. Yeah. You're beautiful. How can people get a hold of you, and, and where can they get a hold of you? Um, my website JeanetteStGermain.com and whew, <laughs> my office phone, 4806, I forget, cell phone, 480-233-3081. One more time, honey. One more time with that phone number. I know. Um, so my direct number is 480-233-3081. You can Beautiful. email me through the website. Call me. Good, good. Have fun. We'd love to have you, honey. Yes, thank you so, so much. I feel just as honored as you do. I, I invite us to come together again and, and do another one of these podcasts because I know there's more beautiful information to share and and I believe that more people are going to hear these podcasts and be connected and they're going to crave more. And I, you know, if you want to come back 10 more times, mm -hmm. you are absolutely welcome. Uh, I I definitely welcome you for that. Mm -hmm. And one quick thing, though, when you mentioned the dimensions of 13 and 144, I always have resonated with 13 anyways, you know, quote unquote, my lucky number. And I know it resonates with the goddesses, but I always see 144. And so now, probably now I know why I always see mm -hmm. those two numbers and I, and, and number seven, but, uh, but those two numbers I see a lot of. So nice. thank you for kind of putting that in perspective for me in a sense, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I, <laughs> wow. Thank you. Oh, I don't know what else welcome. to say. I'm speechless. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Julie. 144. Oh, yeah. 144 is nine, which is the atoms, which is nine, we have within us is 99.9% .9 atoms are empty in that. So we are emptiness of nines, which is endings and mm -hmm. new beginnings mm -hmm. to start all over. Again. Okay. We're talking about feminine energies right now, <laughs> not science. Now we're getting into quantum mechanics. <laughs> but thank you for sharing just the what? same. Science. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Number it frequency. Is, yeah, it is quantum physics. You're right. Yeah. It's created by the divine. Yes, there thank you, go. you, Cindy. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> wow. You have to have one little pluck at it, you know, every but time. Thank you. Your yeah, your yeah. information is just as important. Thank you. Yeah. Fraud's <laughs> <laughs> Fraud's important. <laughs> All right, guys, we have to say good night. Mm, good night, you. Jeanette. Good and thank you. Love thank you, you so Absolutely. much. She Mike, will be back, I promise you. It's an you honor, honor, honor. You if you want to get a hold of Cindy and Rod, you. you guys can get a hold of us at Beyond Today at 602-374-4926. at 602-374-4926. You also can get a hold of Mike here at that same number, too, if you want Mike to come out to your place and, and do stuff. Stuff. <laughs> so, stuff. We, we love you, Mike. All right. <laughs> Thank you all Thank so you. much. Thanks, y'all. Good night, everybody. Love and Good night. Blessings Thank you. And Thank peace. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>